Afton Water by Robert Burns From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 5 Nature, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org By Thomas Peter Afton Water Flow gently, sweet Afton Among thy green braids Flow gently, I'll sing thee a song in thy praise. My Mary's asleep by thy murmuring stream. Flow gently, sweet afton, disturb not her dream. Thou stock dove whose echo resounds through the glen, Ye wild whistling blackbirds in yon thorny den, Thou green-crested lapwing thy screaming forbear, I charge you, disturb not my slumbering fair. How lofty, sweet Afton, thy neighboring hills, far marked with the courses of clear winding rills. There daily I wander as noon rises high, my flocks and my merry sweet cot in my eye. How pleasant thy banks and green valleys below where wild in the woodlands the primroses blow there oft as mild evening weeps over the lea the sweet scented berkshades my merry and Thy crystal stream often, how lovely it glides, And winds by the cot where my merry resides. How wanton thy waters her snowy feet lave, As gathering sweet flowers, she stems thy clear wave flow gently sweet afton among thy green braids flow gently sweet river the theme of my lays my mary's asleep by thy murmuring stream flow gently sweet afton disturb not her dream end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Snows by Charles Sangster from The World's Best Poetry, Volume 5, Nature, Part 1, read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama as the narrator and Thomas Peter as the crew. The Snows Over the snows buoyantly goes the lumberer's bark canoe. Lightly they sweep, wilder each leap, rending the white caps through away away with the speed of a startled deer while the steersman true and his laughing crew sing of their wild career 
mariners glide far o'er the tide in ships that are stanch and strong safely as they speed we away waking the woods with song away away with the speed of a startled deer while the laughing crew of the swift canoe sing of the raftsman's cheer through forest and brae go rapid and lake where sport for the sun and rain free as the child of the arab wild hardened to toil and pain away away with the speed of a startled deer while our boy in flight in the rapids might heighten our swift career over the snows buoyantly glows the lumberer's bark canoe lightly they sweep wilder each leap tearing the white caps through away away with the speed of a startled deer there's a fearless crew in each light canoe to sing of the raftsman's cheer end of poem this recording is in the public domain my river from the german of edward murica from the world's best poetry volume five nature part one read for librivox dot org by lian yao my river river my river in the young sunshine o oh, clasp afresh in thine embrace this longing burning frame of mine and kiss my breast and kiss my face so there <laughs> already in thine arms i feel thy love i shout i shiver but thou out laughest loud a flouting song proud river and now again my bosom warms the droplets of the golden sunlight glide over and off me sparkling as i swim hither and thither down thy mellow tide or lull amidst its crypts with outstretched limb i fling abroad my arms and lo thy wanton waves curl slyly round me but ere their loose chains have well bound me again they burst away and let me go o oh, sun-loved river wherefore dost thou hum 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 alway thy strange deep mystic song unto the rocks and strands for they are dumb and answer nothing as thou flowest along why singest so all hours of night and day o oh, river my best river thou i guess art seeking some land where souls have still the gift of speaking with nature in her own old wondrous way lo highest heaven looms far below me here i see it in thy waters as they roll so beautiful so blue so clear twould seem o oh river mine to be thy very soul oh could i hence dive down to such a sky might i but bathe my spirit in that glory so far outshining all an ancient fairy story i would indeed have joy to die what on cold earth as deep as thou is aught love is as deep love only is as deep love lavisheth all yet loseth lacketh naught like thee too love can neither pause nor sleep roll on thou loving river thou lift up thy waves those eyes bright with a riotous laughing thou makest me immortal i am quaffing the wine of rapture from no earthly cup at last thou bearest me with soothing tone back to thy bank of rosy flowers thanks then and fare thee well enjoy thy bliss alone and through the years melodious hours echo for ever from thy bosom broad all glorious tales that sun and moon be telling and woo down to their soundless fountain dwelling the holy stars of god end of poem this recording is in the public domain on the rhine by william lyle bowles from the world's best poetry volume five nature part one read for librivox.org by sonia
on the rhine twas morn and beautiful the mountain's brow hung with the clusters of the bending vine shone in the early light when on the rhine we sailed and heard the waters round the prow in murmurs parting varying as we go rocks after rocks come forward and retire as some grey convent wall or sunlit spire starts up along the banks unfolding slow here castles like the prisons of despair frown as we pass there on the vineyard side the bursting sunshine pours its streaming tide while grief forgetful amid scenes so fair counts not the hours of a long summer's day nor heeds how fast the prospect winds away end of poem this recording is in the public domain oxus from suram and rustum by matthew arnold from the world's best poetry volume five nature part one read for LibriVox.org by craig franklin oxus but the majestic river floated on out of the mist and hum of that low land into the frosty starlight and there moved rejoicing through the hushed chorasmian waste under the solitary moon he flowed right for the polar star past d'orgagne brimming and bright and large then sands begin to hem his watery march and dam his streams and split his currents that for many a league the shorn and parcelled oxa strains along through beds of sand and matted rushy isles oxus forgetting the bright speed he had in his high mountain cradle in pamir a foiled circuitous wanderer till at last the longed-for dash of waves is heard and wide his luminous home of waters open bright and tranquil from whose floor the new bathed stars emerge and shine upon the aral sea end of poem this recording is in the public domain the fall of niagara by john gardiner calkins brainerd from the world's best poetry volume five nature part one read for librivox dot org by jason in panama the fall of niagara the thoughts are strange that crowd into my brain while i look upward to thee it would seem as if god poured thee from his hollow hand and hung his bow upon thine awful front and spoke in that loud voice which seemed to him who dwelt in patmos for his saviour's sake the sound of many waters and had bade thy flood to chronicle the ages back and notch his centuries in the eternal rocks deep calleth unto deep and what are we that hear the question of that voice sublime oh what are all the notes that ever rung from war's vain trumpet by thy thundering side yea what is all the riot man can make in his short life to thy unceasing roar and yet bold babbler what art thou to him who drowned a world and heaped the waters far above its loftiest mountains a light wave that breaks and whispers of its maker's might john gardiner calkins brainerd end of poem this recording is in the public domain to seneca lake by james gates percival from the world's best poetry volume five nature part one read for librivox dot org by thomas peter to seneca lake on thy fair bosom silver lake the wild swan spreads his snowy sail and round his breast the ripples break as down he bears before the gale on thy fair bosom waveless stream the dipping paddle echoes far and flashes in the moonlight gleam and bright reflects a polar star 
the waves along thy pebbly shore as blows the north wind heave their foam and curl around the dashing oar as late the boatman hies him home how sweet at set of sun to view thy golden mirror spreading wide and see the mist of mantling blue float round the distant mountain side at midnight hour as shines the moon a sheet of silver spreads below and swift she cuts at highest noon light clouds like wreaths of purest snow on thy fair bosom silver lake oh i could ever sweep the oar when early birds at morning wake and evening tells us toil is o'er end of poem this recording is in the public domain the bugle by alfred lord tennyson from the world's best poetry volume five nature part one read for librivox dot org by sonia the bugle from the princess the splendor falls on castle walls and snowy summits old in story the long light shakes across the lakes and the wild cataract leaps in glory blow bugle blow set the wild echoes flying blow bugle answer echoes dying 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 o oh, hark o oh, hear how thin and clear and thinner clearer farther going o oh, sweet and far from cliff and scar the horns of elfland faintly blowing blow let us hear the purple glance replying blow bugle answer echoes dying 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 o oh, love they die in yon rich sky they faint on hill or field or river our echoes roll from soul to soul and grow forever and forever blow bugle blow set the wild echoes flying and answer echoes answer dying 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 end of poem this recording is in the public domain the lake isle of innisfree by william butler yeats from the world's best poetry volume five nature part one read for librivox .org by thomas peter the lake isle of innisfree i will arise and go now and go to innisfree and a small cabin build there of clay and wattles made nine bean rows will i have there a hive for the honey-bee and live alone in the bee-loud glade and i should have some peace there for peace comes dropping slow dropping from the vales of the morning to where the cricket sings there's midnight all a glimmer and noon a purple glow and evening full of the linnet's wings i will arise and go now for always night and day i hear lake water lapping with low sounds by the shore while i stand on the roadway or on the pavement's gray i hear it in the deep heart's core end of poem this recording is in the public domain calm on lake leman from child herald canto three by lord byron from the world's best poetry volume five nature part one read for librivox org by jason in panama calm on lake leman from child herald canto three clear placid leman thy contrasted lake with the wild world i dwelt in is a thing which warns me 
with its stillness to forsake earth's troubled waters for a purer spring this quiet sail is as a noiseless wing to waft me from distraction once i loved torn ocean's roar but thy soft murmuring sounds sweet as if a sister's voice reproved that i with stern delights should e'er have been so moved it is the hush of night and all between thy margin and the mountains dusk yet clear mellowed and mingling yet distinctly seen save darkened jura whose capped heights appear precipitously steep and drawing near where breathes a living fragrance from the shore of flowers yet fresh with childhood on the ear drops the light drip of the suspended oar or chirps the grasshopper one good night carol more he is an evening reveller who makes his life an infancy and sings his fill at intervals some bird from out the brake starts into voice a moment then is still there seems a floating whisper on the hill but that is fancy for the starlight dews all silently their tears of love instil weeping themselves away till they infuse deep into nature's breast the spirit of her hues lord byron end of poem this recording is in the public domain the silence of the hills by william prescott foster from the world's best poetry volume five nature part one read for librivox dot org by sonia the silence of the hills the windy forest rousing from its sleep voices its heart in hoarse titanic roar the ocean bellows from its rocky shore the cataract that haunts the rugged steep makes mighty music in its headlong leap the clouds have voices and the rivers pour their floods in thunder down to ocean's floor the hills alone mysterious silence keep they cannot rend the ancient chain that bars their iron lips nor answer back the sea that calls to them far off in vain the stars they cannot hail nor their wild brooks ah me what cries from out their stony hearts will break in god's great day when all that sleep shall wake end of poem this recording is in the public domain storm in the alps from child harold canto three by lord byron from the world's best poetry volume five nature part one read for librivox dot org by craig franklin storm in the alps the sky is changed and such a change o oh night and storm and darkness ye are wondrous strong yet lovely in your strength as in the light of a dark eye in woman far along from peak to peak the rattling crags among leaps the live thunder not from one lone cloud but every mountain now hath found a tongue and jura answers through her misty shroud back to the joyous alps who call to her aloud and this is in the night most glorious night thou wert not sent for slumber let me be a sharer in thy fierce and far delight a portion of the tempest and of thee how the lit lake shines a phosphoric sea and the big rain comes dancing to the earth and now again tis black and now the glee of the loud hills shakes with its mountain mirth as if thy did rejoice o'er a young earthquake's birth end of poem this recording is in the public domain dover cliff from king lear act four scene six by william shakespeare from the world's best poetry volume five nature part one read for librivox.org by jason in panama 
Dovercliff from King Lear, Act Four, Scene Six. Come on, sir, here's the place, stand still. How fearful and dizzy tis to cast one's eyes so low. The crows and choughs that wing the midway air show scarce so gross as beetles. Halfway down hangs one that gathers samphire. Dreadful trade! Methinks he seems no bigger than his head. The fishermen that walk upon the beach appear like mice, and yon tall anchoring bark diminished to her cock, her cock a boy almost too small for sight. The murmuring surge that on the unnumbered idle pebbles chafes cannot be heard so high. I'll look no more, lest my brain turn and the deficient sight topple down headlong. Shakespeare End of Poem this recording is in the public domain. Choral Song by Euripides Translated from the Greek by H. H. Milman From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 5 Nature, Part 1 Read for LibriVox.org By Thomas Peter as the Chorus And Sonia as the Bacchanal Choral Song from the Bacchae on the mountains wild to sweet when faint with rapid dance our feet our limbs on earth all careless thrown with the sacred fawn skins shown to quaff the goat's delicious blood a strange a rich a savage food then off again the revel goes o'er phrygian lydian mountain brows Evoe, Evoe leads the road, back is the self the maddening god, and flows with milk the plain, and flows with wine, flows with the wild bees nectar dews divine, and soars like smoke the Syrian incense pale, the wild, the frantic bacchanal, the beckoning pine torch on her wand whirls around with rapid hand and drives the wandering dance about beating time with joyous shout and casts upon the breezy air all her rich luxuriant hair ever the burden of her song raging maddening haste along bacchus's daughters ye the pride of gold and mola's fabled side while your heavy cymbals ring Still your Evoe, Evoe sing. Evoe, the Evian god rejoices in Phrygian tones and Phrygian voices when the soft holy pipe is breathing sweet in notes harmonious to our feet, who to the mountain, to the mountain speeds, like some young colt that by its mother feeds, gladsome with many a frisking bound. The bacchanal goes forth and treads the echoing ground. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. An Alpine Descent by Samuel Rogers. From the World's Best Poetry, Volume 5, Nature, Part 1. Read for LibriVox.org by Craig Franklin. An Alpine Descent My mule refreshed, his bells jingled once more the signal to depart, and we set out in the grey light of dawn, descending rapidly by waterfalls, fast frozen and among huge blocks of ice, that in their long career had stopped midway. At length, unchecked, unbidden, he stood still, and all his bells were muffled, then my guide, lowering his voice, addressed me. Through this chasm, on, and say nothing, for a word, a breath, stirring the air, may loosen and bring down a winter's snow, enough to overwhelm the horse and foot that night and day defiled along this path to conquer at Marengo. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain.
from mont blanc by percy by she shelley from the world's best poetry volume five nature part one read for librivox dot org by sonia from mont blanc mont blanc yet gleams on high the power is there the still and solemn power of many sights and many sounds and much of life and death in the calm darkness of the moonless nights in the lone glare of day the snows descend upon that mountain none beholds them there nor when the flakes burn in the sinking sun or the starbeams dart through them winds content silently there and heap the snow with breath rapid and strong but silently its home the voiceless lightning in these solitudes keeps innocently and like vapour broods over the snow the secret strength of things which governs thought and to the infinite dome of heaven is as a law inhabits thee and what wert thou and earth and stars and sea if to the human mind's imaginings silence and solitude were vacancy end of poem this recording is in the public domain. End of The World's Best Poetry, Volume 5, Nature, Part 1.